Hi, Jean and Rise. Happy Tuesday. Nice to see you. Hi, Jean and Rise. Oops. Happy Tuesday. You don't need to hear that nice twice. To see you. Here we go. Hello and happy Tuesday. It's Barb Reed, the Wexford Stamper, back from a short break for Easter. I had a wonderful time. I hope everyone had a nice restful holiday. And we are back and ready to do some crafting. Nice weekend today and yesterday was a little chilly, but I know we're back, we'll be back on track for spring soon. Hi, Anne. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to get started again. I had some requests for this one after my team meeting. We made these at our team meeting and people were anxious to get a tutorial on it. All right, let's get started. As you know, um, after tonight's Facebook Live, there will be a blog post put up on my blog with all the specifics about this project. And there will also be a link on that blog post that you can download a PDF. So you can have it, if you're like me, I like to have it in my hands, piece of paper when I'm reading directions. I don't do quite as well when I'm looking at them on the computer. So there will be a two page PDF to help you get through the candy bar holder. Now this, what I did with these directions is I showed you how I came up with the dimensions so that if you don't have the exact same candy bar, which might happen, that you can still modify this for your very own. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get started, I did send out to my customers a batch of the new annual catalogs, which will be um, going live in May. If you are a customer of mine or you don't have a demonstrator, you can always message me and I can get you a um, catalog. If you have bought from me or purchased from me from the last, for the last year, you will probably, if you haven't already gotten the catalog, you'll have it in your hands by the end of the week. So let me know if you need one, just message me and I'll be glad to get you one. All right, also just an, a reminder for those folks that might have something they would like to get um, from the catalog that we still have before it um, is over. We have a free shipping day on April 21st on orders of $75 or more. And free shipping is pretty significant. That can be up to more than $10, depending on how much you buy. So a free shipping day is pretty nice. So um, remember that, that is on the 21st. Today is the 16th. So that would be, no, no, today's the 19th, sorry. So that would be on Wednesday. Wednesday is the day, oh, good. Guy, I'm glad you got yours today, Rise. Excellent. All right. Always remember that if you need any um, information, hey, April, you can always go to my blog, um, the wexardstamper.blogspot.com. All of the projects that I've made and done during my Facebook Lives are all on my blog. And you can just go into the search bar and put in a couple of words and it will pop up. Um, the project. If you have any questions about the project or you can't seem to find it, you can always message me, you know that. All righty, I am ready to go. So tonight we're going to make these cute little concertina fold candy bar holders. Now the reason we call them that sounds very, very fancy is because they have these cute little pleats on the sides of the treat holder. So it gives you a little bit of space 
inside. It's almost like an envelope. It's like one of those envelopes that you get for your office that you hold um, several file folders in. And it, the concertina design gives you a little more space as you get more folders. So that's basically what we're making today. And I'm just showing you here that I have kind of gone into my stash and gotten out um, all the different DSPs that I could find that I just had left um, in from the last catalog, and I just kind of put them together. This one was from the Daisies. You can notice I didn't put any sentiments on them, but mostly because I'm not sure what I'm gonna give them away for, and I can always put that on at the last moment. And then your belly band comes off, and then you open up, and you have your candy bar inside. So I just went through, grabbed some that I had a pretty sick, significant size piece of paper left and then I this one I use the tulips so pretty I love the mango melody tulips this is the symmetry okay and this one is the one we did with our team meeting and I can't remember the name of the paper but I just kind of went through my stash found something and made it into a concertina style folder. Now, let me grab, I use the same size candy bar for all of them. And this is a candy bar that I've used. This is from Lidl. Okay, now, you might not be able to get the same candy bar and that's okay. So I'm gonna show you tonight how you can measure your candy bar and figure out the sizes you'll need to make your um, treat holder. Okay, all right, am I wrong? Is it Thursday? Today's Tuesday. Yes. Thank you, April. I'm not back onto my days yet. So Thursday, thank you to April, is the free shipping day. I'm glad you guys have my back. All right. Trying to get back into the swing here. All right. So we're going to make it so that this size bar is going to fit into it. And today we're going to make one very similar to this. Last couple of weeks, we've used the um, ladybugs. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use the ladybug bundle. Let me show you that real quick. Here are the pieces. There is no coordinating paper with this. It has the Hello Ladybug stamp set, and it has the ladybug punch. Okay, so that's the one we'll be using today. But remember, you can use anything to make these. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do is measure your candy bar, okay? And I even kind of map this out on your directions. So you're gonna have to kind of do some math. So girls, it isn't hard math, you can do it. So I'm gonna bring in my little sticky note here and we're gonna figure out the size of the designer series paper I'm gonna need for this, okay? So let's go ahead and do some measuring, okay? First, I'm gonna measure the length of the bar. Okay, and I am just gonna measure the candy bar. I'm not gonna measure the paper on the end because that can always be folded in, but the, my bar is six inches long. Okay, so I'm gonna write that over here, six inches. All right, to figure out the size of your paper, you're going to need to add one and one half inch to the length of your bar. So that's going to be seven and one half. Look at that math. Hey, I taught third grade, but I can even do fractions. All right. So that is going to be the length of your paper. Okay. Now let's measure the height of our candy bar. And the height of my candy bar is three inches. Okay. So how do we decide on that amount? So I'm gonna write in three inches. I'm going to add one quarter. So that's going to give me three and one quarter. And then I am going to double that number because we need a front and a back. So that is going to give us six and one half. And then for our flap, that goes over the front, we have to add two. 
and that is going to give us eight and a half. Don't worry, all this is on that, um, that PDF, okay? So the paper I'm going to need to cut is going to be seven and a half by eight and a half. I hope you guys caught on to that a little bit. I had to go through it a little quick. All right, I grabbed paper from that pattern party set that I had. I used the polka dot last time. I'm gonna use the black and white flowers this time. I'm gonna bring up my trimmer. And yes, my piece was going to be seven and a half. by eight and a half. Okay, seven and a half by eight and a half. So that's the size that I need for my envelope that I'm putting together. Okay, so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring up my scoring board. Okay, now remember this way here is the width and then the longer one is what's going to wrap around, okay? So for the width, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna score one half on each side. Gonna turn it and score one and a half again, okay? I don't know if you can see that, just a half inch in from both sides, okay? Now, for our other way, we're going to have to, with the eight and a half at the top, we're going to score at three and a quarter, six and a half. Three and a quarter, six and a half. All right? Okay, so let's go ahead. We can take our scoring board away. Now we're gonna just do some folding and a little bit of cutting, not a lot, not much to do. All right, let's see. Okay, I'm trying to find myself. I hope you guys are still on. Uh, yep, there I am, oh, there I am. Okay, so now let's grab our piece of paper here, the first thing I'm going to do is fold in and crease those one half inch lines there. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and fold up and crease our other two pieces here. Okay, so now we just have a little bit of cutting to do. Your two inch strip at the top is actually gonna be the flap that goes over the front of your treat holder, just like this. This is that two inch piece right here. Hey, Kathy, long time no see, hope you're well. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off these one half inch strips on both sides of the flap. So this is the two inch flap. So that's gonna come across and down. Okay, there's our panel there. And I always like to give those corners a little bit of a round. So I'm bringing in my trio punch. And just to let you know, this trio punch is going to be retiring. So if you don't have anything that punches a corner, this would be a great buy for you. Just wanted to let you know, I really love this. I was sad to see it go. Okay, so now, the last thing we're gonna do here, before we bring in our pieces to make the pleats, we're gonna cut in to the, through the one inch piece here, and then I'm just going to cut a little nip out of each side there, just so we can kind of see the beginning of one panel and the, begin, the end of the other. Okay, so now you can kind of see what I've done here. Cut off the sides here, so we have our two inch flap, and then right on that score line, I just cut a little bit of 
paper off top and bottom piece so we can see that a little better. Everybody following along okay? All right, let's go ahead and make our little concertina folds or whatever you'd like to call them. Now, let's talk about those, okay? For your concertina folds, your paper is going to be for tall, how tall it's going to be, is going to be the height of your candy bar. How tall was our candy bar? It was three inches tall. So that is how tall this paper is. And we're doing it real red. Okay. How wide is it? Two inches. It's always going to be two inches. If your candy bar is four inches tall, then it will be four inches tall, two inches wide. So it stays at two. The number on the height changes depending on the size of your candy bar. Okay, so mine are three by two. And you need two of these, one for each side of the envelope. Okay, now let's bring this in. And what we're gonna do here, we're going to make the score lines so that we can fold up the pleats on our concertina fold. We're just going to score every half inch. Okay, so there's that one. Every half inch, one, two, three. Remember we're putting the two inch side up at the top. Okay, now that's all the scoring we need. Now we're gonna fold these up like little accordion folds. Okay, I got them all folded up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my bone folder and give it a good crease. Do the same thing to the other one, just front, back, front, back. Okay. All right, there we go. There's our two pleats for our concertina fold. Now let's bring this back in. Okay, we're gonna fold in these half inch panels toward the inside of the treat holder. We're going to take our concertina fold pleat panels. That's a big word, we don't really need all those. We're gonna take this thing here and I'm gonna put a little bit of Tombow on there and I'm going to glue it starting at the top here so that the edge of this paper is along the fold of the treat holder there. So I'm putting it right up against the edge there. I'm gonna hold it. Okay, so we want that right up against the edge. Let that dry. Let's do the same with the other. I'm gonna put a little bit of Tombow. We're going to put the edge of this paper along the edge of where the fold is there and glue it down. And you want it also to be along the top here. Okay, now it won't go all the way to the bottom. We don't want it to. I'm gonna just glue those down there. Okay, the most important thing to remember is you want the outside edge against the fold. Don't put fold against fold or it will not work quite as well. All right, so there we have them connected to the front of our, our treat holder. Let's fold these ones in the back down, okay? Gonna put a little more on here. Less is more, you don't need a lot of Tombow, okay? Then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna fold these up, okay? Bring this up and around so that that other edge of our panel here, our folded pleated um, cardstock goes up against the back fold. Let's do it over here. Fold in down and push it in there so that that edge comes up against. And then all you're gonna do is push down and hold it a little bit. Okay, so let's check and see if I did a good job with my measurements. 
going to go right inside. Now, where you want, you want your um, candy bar to go inside this space here, because that's where it's at its largest. Okay, so I'm going to slide it in there. Remember, you can always fold over your little um, side pieces here. Okay, so I'm going to fold those over, and then I'm going to kind of stick it right in that middle pleat. Okay, and then push it straight on down. Okay, and since you did um, give it a quarter inch extra, it should fit in very well. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and close down. Oh dear, I did not glue close enough to the edge here. Let's go back and give that a little more glue. Got to make sure that you have your glue to the edge of that little pleated piece or it might stick out there. All right, I think that looks much better. I'm gonna bring this down over front. Okay, so we have, we're getting there. Okay, so there we have our treat box finished. Now let's bring in our belly band. Okay, the piece for your belly band is gonna be two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay my treat box right on top of my belly band so that the same amount of cardstock is sticking out the top and the bottom, okay? Then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to kind of draw a line right under the candy bar. And that's gonna give put a score line onto my belly band so I can lift it right up. Okay, now I, you can score on top as well if you'd like, or what I did is I just brought it over and left it just kind of rounded. Okay, but let's go ahead and grab some of my tear and tape for this. This is great for belly bands because it's got to hold a lot of pressure there. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab my pick tool. And then I'm gonna bring the top of the belly band down and over. Okay, there we go. Now you don't want it to be super tight. You just kind of want it to be snug. All right, so I'm gonna bring it over. You wanna make sure the sides are lined up and then you just press it down. Okay, and there you have your belly band. Okay, now we're gonna be putting something on the front so you don't have to worry about this line here. That's gonna be covered up, okay? All right, now let's get started on our front piece, okay? With all of my designs, I use the same basic circles here. This is a two and three eighths, I believe, yes. Two and three eighths inch circle with the coordinating scallop. This is basic white, basic black. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my glue and put those together. All right, now let's do a little bit of stamping. We don't have a lot to do with this one. Okay, first thing we're gonna stamp is the leaf that our little ladybug is gonna be sitting on. Now you could have um, put the stamp the leaf directly to the circle if you'd like. I didn't do that, not sure why. It was just the mood I was in, I guess. I'm gonna take shaded spruce and I'm going to stamp it onto some basic white cardstock. And let's try that again. You can tell I haven't had this out for a while. All right, now, better. There we go, now we're talking. All right, so then I'm gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting. So, I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter. 
I'm very, very excited about the new catalog coming out. And I have um, sent an invitation for all of my stamping friends to join a bingo group. I'll be having a bingo event on May 6th. It's a Friday evening at seven o'clock. I will be showing off some really cool projects that I made using some of the new product from the brand new catalog. And of course, we will have some bingo games in between and we will be winning some awesome prizes. So hopefully you got an invitation to that bingo group. If you did not, please let me know and I'll be glad to send you an invite. It is a free event. I just am so excited about what's available. I wanted to show you some of the projects I've been working on. Okay, now let's go ahead and we're going to glue our little leaf down here on this little two and three eighths inch circle. Let's put him this way and then we'll put the. All right, so there we have that ready. Now it's time to make our little ladybug. Okay, I'm gonna grab my ladybug punch, a piece of basic black, and I'm gonna punch out a body. Okay, so there is the body for the ladybug. Okay, for the wings. One more bit of stamping to do on some basic white. I'm going to take some real red and we're gonna stamp ourselves some wings. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp those right here on my basic white. I stamp them towards the edge because I'm gonna be using the punch and hopefully I put it in the right spot that I will be able to punch it, okay? Remember, you always want to hold your punch upside down so you can see where you're going. You're going to uh, <laughs> always thought about it, but you know how that goes when you think you got it right. So upside down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it, try again. And this time, I'm going to be putting them The other way, there we go. Just makes it easier if you remember which way to go. And it's always good when you're just using um, specific parts of the punch instead of the whole thing that you use thinner strips because then you won't be wasting as much paper. There we go. Now that was what I meant to do the first time. <laughs> Gonna punch those out. Aren't those cute little ladybug wings? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put the wings on our ladybug using some dimensionals. So grab some dimensionals and on the back side of the wings, and then we're going to go ahead and put that up here like that. Now he's looking more like a ladybug. All right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring this back in here and I'm going to use some more dimensionals and I'm gonna put them right on the front of my belly band, just like that. And that is where I'm going to place my scallop circle, okay? And if you notice, it's large enough that it really does cover up the spot below there that had the, um, that you could see the line from the strip. Okay, now I'm also gonna put one down here a little lower cause that's up a little higher than I'd like. There we go, that's better. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add our cute little ladybug to the front. Let's just do that with a little bit of Tombow. So I'm not gonna put a, um, sentiment on this. I'm just gonna save it and see what I might wanna do. Mother's Day is coming up. This would be cute for a friend who's a mom. We'll see. 
All right, and then I finished it off with a little piece of the elegant trim, the silver elegant trim. All right, so that would be a glue dot I would need for that. There we go. I take the knot from the bow that I made, stick it right down on the glue dot, and my pick tool, I can grab it now and pick it right up. And then I put my little bow here on the side. You can kind of put it wherever you like. There we go. Isn't that cute? So pretty. So that is it. So I hope you um, enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you understand a little bit about the math that's necessary to put the um, to determine the size of the designer series paper. Make sure that you download, not download, but you print out my PDF tutorial and try it out for yourself. If you are unsure still with all the directions and things, do not hesitate to give me a message me and let me know. I'd be so glad to help you um, if you're still having a little bit of trouble with that. So that is my tutorial for this evening. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so excited to be back and crafting again. And we will see you next week. I'll be moving into some of our new product next week. So stay tuned. And remember, if you need a catalog, make sure that you message me and make sure that you get into my bingo group and I am so excited to show you what's coming up in the next Stampin' Up! year. So thanks so much for joining, and happy stamping. Bye-bye.